Hey everybody, long time no see. It's a work from home Friday public service announcement. Facebook has been in the news a lot lately, again, for how easy it is for your personal information to be shared and used by other people. This week it was because your data, apparently, was used to manipulate the 2016 elections, somehow. But in the past, it's been things like targeted advertising or even identity theft. So today, as a public service, I thought I would do a little test. I created a fake Facebook account with no friends. Meet Mr. I got no friends. I had no idea how hard it was to beat Facebook's real name restrictions. I got has a full bio with addresses and jobs and plenty of favorites, sports teams, music, and movies. I also clicked through on some of those oh-so-clever quizzes and, of course, Candy Crush. Hours later, I remembered why I was on Candy Crush and got back to the matter at hand. I need to buy magic paintbrush and extra lives and I can send jelly boosters to all of my friends! You sound like a crazy person. Now I didn't touch any of the privacy settings. Everything on iGOT's account is defaulted, as it would be for your 70 year old grandma who just wants to get on Facebook to see baby pictures. So let's see what, well, everyone can learn about Mr. Nuffarans. So, everything. Any Facebook user can see that I got graduated from Texas A&M with a degree in gender studies, and that he's now a bagger at a grocery store, and also that he lives in Aurora, Colorado, watches Antique Roadshow and Mega Truckers, and is a devout Rastafarian. We can also see all of his posts or pictures, videos, things that he's liked, even Facebook connected events that he's been to. And don't take my word for it, you can see all of this too. Link in the doobly-doo. So who really cares? Well, Facebook cares because all of that data is worth billions, yes with a B. Not only to advertisers and political groups, but also to identity thieves. Not only does this allow Facebook to target you with ads that you're more likely to click, they can show you or not show you political content that Facebook or the highest bidder wants or doesn't want you to see. See, that's where all this election meddling stuff comes in. Now, of course, outside companies want in on this too, and that's where all of those quizzes and games come in. Do you really think someone went to all the trouble to design and host one of those quiz sites just so that you can find out what you look like when you're 80 or what kind of potato you are? No. All of those math problems that only geniuses get right, or the posts that you won't believe what happens when you comment with a Q or whatever, they're really just collecting your Facebook account and the Facebook accounts of all of your friends. But why? Well, sometimes it's so that they can market their shady weight loss drugs to you and all your friends. Sometimes it's so that they can use Facebook connections to connect other stolen data and send you more convincing virus emails. Yes, really. I got this email from a person who I know on Facebook who has never sent me an email and yet has a link I might want to click. First, never ever click the link. Second, how did this hacker know my email address and the fact that I know Tim? First off, this is my spam email address. You should get one too. It's the address that I use to sign up for all the websites and anything that asks for an email that I really don't want information back from. And any emails that come to that address, I treat with extreme suspicion. Second, somebody, probably not Tim, clicked on one of those stupid quizzes and their friends list contained a person whose friends list contained a person whose friends list contained Tim, whose friend list contains me. Voila, targeted malware. What else does this hacker have access to? Well, you remember that awful thing you said about your boss on Twitter? Or that horrible drunk pic that you drunk Snapchatted? Oh, why, why, don't do it! Now I hear you, but Trent, what can I do about it? Well, you could quit Facebook, but while you're at it, make sure and throw away your cell phone, which tracks your location 24 hours a day, and your smart TV that knows exactly what you watch and when, and that discount card from the grocery store that knows which brand of toilet paper you really like. Then go live in a cabin in the woods and eat squirrels while you handwrite your manifesto against humanity. Or you can accept that we live in a digital age and the cost of convenience is exposing yourself. Just be careful about what you expose. What is it with the drunk Snapchats? No amount of disabling permissions or checking privacy checkboxes is going to change the fact that Facebook and Google and Snapchat and Twitter own your data and they're still going to use it for their game. Use your brain about what you post and what you read before you share that link to let everybody know that there's worms in our bottled water or needles in the movie seats or that some politician did something impossibly stupid 
spend 30 seconds verifying the source. Remember, we live in a digital age, which means you have access to data too. And now you know. Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe! And yes, identity thieves. I don't know what to do with my hand. Outside companies went on in, went on in on in. Uh. Corn soup. It's really good.